Craig here and I was just about to do some Qubit research and I figured why not fire up Camtasia and share with you how I go about doing this or how I'm going to come up with my Qubit phrase that I want to use. So my next video tutorial is going to be covering Google Analytics bounce rate. I want to share with people how they can lower their bounce rate if they have a high bounce rate. I don't want to talk about the bounce rate in this video because I want to show you how I'm going to come up with my uh, Qubit phrase. Now I use two tools mainly when I do my keyword research. I use the Google AdWords Keyword Planner and then I use this tool which I'm also going to be publishing a video covering this. Anyway, let's close out of that. So I'm not going to be showing you all the features of this tool, I just want to show you how I'm going to come up with my uh, keyword phrase that I want to target. So let's start off with my uh, main phrase here is going to be bounce rate because that is exactly what I'm going to be teaching in my video tutorial. So we are only going to use Google and we are only going to use the alphabet soup technique. Now if I could, if I hit search, obviously what's going to happen now is going to do the alphabet soup technique, but it's only going to be doing the alphabet soup technique at the front of the phrase like, you know, bounce rate A, bounce rate B, bounce rate C, etc. Now, you know what, let's clear these results and start over because that's not how I want to do it. So we will leave the alphabet soup technique on. We'll put asterisk. Actually, no, we'll do how asterisk bounce rate because I'm doing a video tutorial and from my personal experience, I know that if I'm using the word how, that is more likely to trigger a video thumbnail in the Google web results. And you know, that's one of my goals that I always try and aim for. So it's going to perform, you can see the queries it's going to perform here. It's going to, you know, how F bounce rate, how G bounce rate. Uh, you can even dig much deeper. You could, you can see how that's going to work. I generally don't go that deep. So I'm just going to go from A to Z and we'll keep it on add to current results and we'll hit search. Now the reason I've left it on Google only is because I've using the asterisk in the middle. Now you can only use it on Google and Amazon if you put the asterisk at the middle or the beginning. If I wanted to use YouTube, Yahoo and Bing etc then it does the keyword phrase and then the alphabet soup technique. Okay, so we have 93 keyword phrases all related to how and bounce rate. Now, when you think about it, how bounce rate, it, most of these keyword phrases are likely going to be, be able to uh, be related to my video tutorial. Now, I'm going to turn the alphabet soup technique off and we have recursive here. So we're going to turn this on and I'm going to hit search and then I'll explain what's going to happen. So basically it goes to Google, it does the how, uh, asterisk, a bounce rate, and then it, Google is going to give it the top 10 suggestions. And then it's going to take each, each suggestion and do the same thing. It's going to put that in and then retrieve that 10 suggestions. And it's going to go through the whole list. You know, sometimes it m might not return many, like you can see how many, the numbers it's returned. So now we're up to 102 different keyword phrases, because keep in mind when we did the alphabet soup technique, many keyword phrases would have been uh, repeated, etc. But these are, this is 102, you know, no duplicate keyword phrases. So, you know, we need some kind of uh, search volume numbers and that's where the keyword planner comes in here. So I'm gonna click on copy all and head over to the Google AdWords keyword planner if you want to use the Google AdWords Keyword Planner, you don't need a credit card or anything like that. You just go there, you start to create your account, sign up, uh, you know, set your time zone, your currency, and then that's pretty much all you need to do. Then you can come over to Tools and click on the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. And we have four options here. The first one is if you're only going to enter in one keyword phrase. So you know what, let's just do this for an example. So if you didn't use the other tool and you just came directly to the keyword planner, let's say I entered in bounce rate and I guess I don't hit return, I hit get ideas. Now they always put it into ad groups first. Uh, I always click over to keyword ideas because I want to see the data straight away. So I am going to scroll down and you can see 
we have a bunch of keyword phrases, but I personally do not like to do it this way. We have 317, but you'll see that there's a, these keyword phrases like see website traffic. Well, what the heck has that got to do with Google Analytics bounce rate, web page analytics? They are very, these are very broad keyword phrases. So this is exactly why I use both tools combined. So I'm going to just come back. We'll click on Keyword Planner and we'll start this over. Okay, so this time we are going to use the second drop down menu. Get search volume from the list of keyword phrases. We'll do Control V, paste them in. Scroll down, get search volume. And we'll clo uh, close that out. And if we scroll down, you'll see these, granted, it's a low number of monthly searches. But that isn't the point I'm trying to make here. So if we scroll down and you're only seeing 30 keyword phrases per page, you can change this from 30 to 100. So my next step is I, I want to scan over these keyword phrases and see if there's one that I want to go and target or go after. Now, like how to reduce bounce rate on WordPress. Oh no, how to reduce bounce rate on a blog. I'm guessing this would have less QSR. So first of all, if I take a look at the monthly search volume, I can see uh, there's not a great deal of searches, 10, 20, whatever. But the thing is, if I go ahead and I write a detailed blog post about how to reduce your bounce rate on a blog, it's very likely that I will slowly start to rank for other phrases like how to reduce bounce rate on WordPress or how to lower bounce rate on a blog. You, you, I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to get at here. So. If I want to check the QSR, I use this uh, Chrome extension, the context menu search. You have to set up a custom query, uh, check the video description or a blog post about this. So I'm going to click on Google QSR and it's eight. So you, you know, you may think if QSR is eight, you, you'll rank for that, surely. Well, it doesn't always work like that, but this is a good indication to me how many people go in after that particular phrase. So I'm going to redo this search here and I'm going to turn on my uh, Moz bar to take a look at the first page results. Now I like to see the page authority and the domain authority. So let me just redo this search here. We'll do uh, Google US. Uh, we'll do Google US uh, non-personalized because that was showing me google.ca and it was somewhat personalized. So I can see, you know, this, these kind of stats, they are going to be hard to outrank. And, you know, they, they all kind of look pretty tough here, but this one maybe, you know, after a bit of time and work, then there's no reason why you couldn't outrank some of these results, but there is no video thumbnail. And, you know, it's very possible that I could get my video to appear in the web results and that would be one of my goals and I can see that if I I've just clicked over to the the video tab I can see that clearly nobody is targeting this phrase you know let me just get rid of on blog see how many going after how to reduce bounce rate I don't see anybody ranking for that actual phrase. So that's pretty interesting. So anyway, uh, that is pretty much how I go about doing my keyword research. I'll first, I'll fire up this keyword tool. I'll perform some types of searches. Remember, I only showed you the basic way of doing it. Uh, if I click on ideas, it will give me a whole bunch of different ideas on different ways I can do this. Like, you know, let me just show you a bit more of the power of this. We'll do YouTube, Yahoo. Bing. I won't do eBay or Amazon because it's not really product related. Uh, we'll just do the alphabet soup technique. We'll get rid of that so it doesn't include the 102. We'll hit search. And so now it's going to do the alphabet soup technique but on all four of these search engines. Now the reason I prefer to just use Google is because it allows me to do the alphabet soup technique, but I can put the asterisks in the middle or the beginning. And like I said, I like to do how, you know, asterisks, uh, keyword phrase. 
So it's finished and we have uh, 216. I was expecting a bit more. But remember, if the keyword phrase is already in the list, it doesn't, it doesn't add all of the duplicates. So you would have received a lot. Let me give you one more example. If you type in make money, you'll just see all the keyword phrases pouring in here. And keep in mind, I've set my Google, YouTube, and Yahoo to the uh, Canadian versions as well. And so basically, whenever I do my keyword research, I'll use this tool, uh, and then I'll basically copy all my keywords and come over to the Google Keywords AdWords Planner. Uh, with the Google AdWords Planner, you can paste in up to 1,000 keyword phrases at a time. So that is basically how I do some of my keyword research and how I come up with my keyword phrases that I want to target. Uh, remember, I will be p uploading the other video I've already created covering how to use this tool. Or if you want to check it out, there'll be a link in the video description. Uh, questions or comments, feel free to post them below and have yourself a great productive day.